everybody. Welcome back to Creators Call Shop here on YouTube. My name is Marcy and I'm delighted to have you here with me today. How's everybody doing? How's 2021 treating you? So far we're off to a good start in our 2021. So far everyone has remained healthy and I don't say that lightly. That is a blessing. I know that. Anyway, I'm thrilled that you are all here and I am going to talk today just about my upcoming projects for 2021 here at the beginning of the year. And while we do that, I'm going to work on making um, a snippet strip of sorts. I'm trying to use up some really, truly hideous fabrics like these. These were ones that I had thrifted. I think I showed these in my thrifting video at, it was like thrift haul number two maybe. Uh, so I had picked up these strips and I took them all apart so that I could use the fabric squares in other projects, but I was left with some of these awful, awful patterns here. And look at this, this is just, they're obnoxious, they're hideous. I don't know that I would use them. So my idea is I've decided to cut some of these down into smaller squares, and I'm gonna just try putting them on the fabric strip. So that's where we're going today. It gives you something to look at while I chat. I'm just gonna, talk to you a little bit about what's going on and talk to you about what projects I'm going to be working on and here at the beginning of the new year. So before we get started with that, go ahead, get yourself comfy, get yourself a drink and maybe a snack. And right after this, I will meet you here at the craft table. <music> Welcome back. Before I get started, I would just like to say welcome to all of the new subbies that I have out there. I'm just delighted to have you following along. If you haven't caught my video yet on the goals and my my objective, I guess, for this channel, that's not the right word, what, a vision, maybe? <laughs> anyway, I will link that up here in the cards and you can learn a little bit about what this channel is about. It's primarily a junk journal channel. Now I have thrift hauls and some other things in there. You know, just kind of a little bit of everything, but I just want us to feel free to share ideas and support each other and encourage each other. So that's really what we're here to do. Once in a while, I have an original idea that I share with you. And most of the time, it's just kind of a mix of crafty stuff. Next week I'm going to talk to you, it'll be my one year anniversary on YouTube, which is exciting. I'll talk on that video, just kind of what I've learned and and uh, just different things, just kind of celebrating, marking the one year anniversary. So that's that's pretty surprising to me. So let's get started. All right, I have a small bottle of Fabri-Tac here. That's a little bit easier to manage. I'm just going to run a line of glue down here and then I cut these fabrics into smaller squares as I said and I'm going to just try to lay them on here uh, in a way that looks nice and kind of diminishes the hideousness <laughs> how obnoxious some of these are and later I'll go back with my sewing machine and tack everything down permanently. My sewing machine was having trouble so I took it in and it's all better now. It's been serviced. It needed it. It was 37 years old, I believe. And it was time, time for a little bit of a tune-up. And I have not had a ch I haven't taken the time yet to to try it out yet. So probably tacking these strips down will be my first first try at that. So let's talk about what we have coming up in the new year. Uh, the two videos I had where I was asking for votes, um, I got a few responses and I haven't gotten any more, so we'll, we'll use those to start with. The first journal that I am going to work on is going to be about hope. We will see what we do with that. It's, that's going to be a challenge. I need to define kind of what hope is, what are our expectations of hope. It'll be really good for me to do and to just nail down 
nail down where I want to go with that, but I've already kind of started looking up symbols and characters and um, different things like that. So, so far from what I have seen and read, there isn't one specific character or symbol or color or anything like that that represents hope. It just kind of seems to go with whatever people are wanting hope for at the moment. So I'm interpreting that to mean that I can just do pretty much whatever color or pattern or style or whatever I want. So that'll be the first one. And then we had votes for Mimi's, Mimi's Prayer Garden and Poppy's Praise Book. And if you missed the video on that, Mimi and Poppy are my son-in-law's grandparents. And they're just sweet people. So we spend Christmas Eve with his family at Mimi and Poppy's house. <laughs> this year we did a Christmas light thing. So that was fun on Christmas Eve. We went out looking at Christmas lights in a caravan kind of thing that quickly broke down and lost structure because <laughs> a lot of people just got confused about where to go. But my daughter put together a map and she and um, her sister-in-law they did this clever thing, and I don't know whose idea this was exactly, but they interviewed Mimi and Poppy. Since we couldn't all be together, they interviewed them about different things, um, Christmases when they were kids and their favorite Christmas and different things like that, favorite Christmas food. And then they put it on CD. Since Poppy was a music minister, when we get together at Christmas Eve, we very often, they're singing. <laughs> and so he he leads everybody and everybody in that family is musical so it's a lot of fun and um, and then Mimi plays the piano so on the CD um, Mimi's playing and Poppy's singing and he kind of they lead us in some songs and then you, we get to listen to the interview as we drive along and so that was actually very creative so fun and then at the very end we met for some socially distanced cookies at <laughs> one of one of the aunt's houses and everybody wore their masks and um, we didn't stay very long uh, just because you know just don't want to get sick but it was a lot of fun it was a really fun time going and touring around we just did local Christmas lights because we only uh, wanted it to be like a half hour drive or so it was just a very creative time and, and a, something fun that we can um, look back on when we go out with our family when we go out looking at Christmas lights every year now we can take the CD with us and listen to Mimi and Poppy so that'll be fun so my first videos then will be Mimi and Poppy themed so Mimi's will be a garden theme Mimi's prayer garden Poppy's praise book so that that's perfect since he was a worship minister so we'll do Hope, we'll do Mimi and Poppy, and then the next one after that, should be getting into spring by then, and I've had a vote for a Little Red Hen journal. So we will do Little Red Hen. So that'll be fun. That's all I have so far. I do have ideas for journals in the fall and stuff, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. And I want to leave myself open for um, creative creative uh, direction I guess <laughs> you could say yeah so Christmas was pretty quiet and New Year's was even quieter except my poor dog we have a lot of new people that have moved into our area especially over the last year to year to two years and in our cul-de-sac we've had several houses change ownership over the summer and fall so we don't know who our neighbors are really because we haven't been able to meet them but whoever they are they like to do fireworks <laughs> so we had fireworks on New Year's Eve that people were letting off and my dog was about to flip her lid. She was so upset. You know, if you have a pet, you understand because they don't like the noise. And so they were letting off the illegal ones, the big, really loud, what are they, M something or others, the big, super loud, illegal fireworks. And um, it's like we're getting... The quality of fireworks in the area has certainly up upgraded, but they're also illegal. So at 4th of July, those are the ones that set everything on fire. I'm not as worried about it in January, but <laughs> I 
I certainly don't like people doing that when it's summertime, just because of the fire danger. Let's see, where are we? I should probably get where you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I need like another table I can just string this on. Hold on just a second. I need to string it out so I can see what I'm doing. I just cut a really long strip for the base so that I don't have to quit in the middle. I feel like this is a really boring video. Okay. Um, so I've updated you on Christmas Eve and New Year's. And um, I still got a little bit of a cold, even so, even though I, we've been so careful last week, I actually, on Monday, it was, a, in terms of having a head cold, it was probably one of the best ones you could have because it didn't last but about 24 hours, but the, the um, I couldn't figure out quite where I might have gotten it from, and the, and the most I could figure out was maybe it came from the Christmas Eve, even though we were all masked. So everyone's being careful and and um, staying clean and stuff, but even so, I still managed to catch a cold somewhere. And then Christmas was nice. I told you my kids couldn't come, two of them stayed in Washington, and so we did FaceTime with them, and we, what did we do? I sent them sock, stocking stuffers in advance, so we all opened our stockings together um, using FaceTime, and then we, um, we were supposed to get presents that they were sending with Sam's folks. Well, Sam's parents came to our area for Christmas, and they got about two and a half hours down the road uh, when they left and realized they had left all of our presents back at home. It worked out okay because Sam's dad flew back to check on a couple things for work. So luckily it was a small enough small enough package of stuff that he could take it on the plane with him. But anyway, I got that all traded around. So then this last Sunday, but then we FaceTimed again and um, did our big presents. So kind of stretched Christmas out a little bit, which was fun. Yeah, so I don't know. Did you guys all have ways that you creatively celebrated your holidays or got together. I've been watching this show um, called A Million Little Things. I don't know if anyone else has been watching that. And on there, I mean, I'm thinking like, hey, FaceTime's the greatest thing since ever because, you know, we grew up in the era where there was no video communication. So to be able to see people face to face when you talk with them is quite novel still to us and um but on this show they were talking about facetiming and um mom the mom in the show was working a lot of hours and and the dad was like well we can still you know um you can still talk to our son and she said please don't say facetime and i was like what <laughs> when did facetime become a bad thing instead of a good thing but anyway i just i still think it's a good thing it's a good way to still get together if you can't be in person at least you can see see their face you know before that all we had was just the telephone and um even that was a step up from the olden days when there was carrier pigeon or telegram or telegraph <laughs> you know communication has come a long way see i'm trying to double check what my pattern looks like over there okay there's that where are we Need to make sure I'm actually giving you something to look at. Okay, this one. Yeah, so we've been, I've been binge watching quite a lot of shows over the last few weeks. Just when I was working on the Christmas journal and different things, trying to catch up on shows. So I finished off Pole Dark and I finished off Call the Midwife and I watched Grant Chester. Um, I like to watch the shows and then I tend to, when it gets close to the end of the series, I just draw it out and just save those last two or three episodes, which is silly, I know, but <laughs> I bit the bullet and I finished them. <laughs> so, oh gosh, we've just been trying to find new ones to watch. Um, those are, those are all, uh, PBS on PBS that I've mentioned. Call the Midwife is on Netflix now. So I think they had all the seasons out on Netflix now. I just love that show. Um, 
what else have we been watched? Also on PBS, there's one called Baptiste. So he's a retired detective. He's French. And they're on holiday in, I believe it was Sweden. And there's a mystery. They've got, he's gotten called in to help with a mystery. And it's actually very good. And I'm trying to remember, I don't think there were subtitles. Um, not that I'm against subtitles, but when you're trying to watch, uh, or you're trying to craft, and then you don't have time to read subtitles while your attention's occupied somewhere else. But that one was really good. That had a lot of twists and turns unexpected that you would not not think. Not what I was expecting anyway. Let's see, let's do this one. This one has some pink in there. What else have we been watching? Oh, Endeavor. Um, I also, when I'm trying to catch up on a new season, I go back and watch a couple of episodes from the season prior, two or three, just depending, uh, to kind of get a running start and get get caught back up. And um, so I watched Endeavor. I had to kind of go back and then we watched all of Endeavor. So I'm all completely caught up on Endeavor. And then we also watched, um, or I did, I, my husband got started. He didn't like it as much. Jamestown, which very interesting. And of course, I know that there's a modern spin on this and they're, they're filtering history through the viewpoint of today and our values and our um, what's important to us. But Overall, it was a very good history lesson and really good, um, just really good story. I didn't realize that there was a massacre and um, three years, I guess, after the settlement was started or whatever. Anyway, and so it kind of talks about the early days. I didn't realize that that had happened. So, And I, I do know, though, that the pilgrims were aiming for Jamestown when they... <laughs> And they landed in the wrong spot and then wound up at Plymouth Rock, but Jamestown had already been founded. Yeah, anyway, so that's a good one if you like history. There's no mystery, it's a drama. It's also told from the viewpoint of women that have come to be like mail order brides, which I didn't realize they were doing that in the 1600s. So, see, I just learned a lot of stuff. Okay, now I've lost track of where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Next. Yeah, so that was a good one. And now we're watching, off and on, we're kind of going back and forth between The Unit, which is older, but I'd never seen it. Some of these, you know, were on cable, and so we didn't have cable, and um, which is just fine. I'm not crying over it. But now they're, they've been released to Hulu and Netflix and stuff, so it's kind of interesting to go back and catch up on them and then see where all these actors, what they were doing before or where they went, like you're watching them in an old series and then they, they move on and you don't know where they went. Now I'm learning, you know, what happened to some of them, <laughs> the new roles that they had, so. Let's see here. Yeah, so anyway, if anybody else has good ones, we're almost at the end of the strip. I have a lot of squares though, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these. <laughs> I really do not like these fabrics, they're so icky. Let's see. Oh, I need to put here a shameless plug for my Valentine packs. I'm shop is closed. When you see this one, it will be either have just reopened or will reopen. I can't. I'm losing track of my days. It's this one or the 13th. So sometime over that weekend, I will reopen the shop. So I have Valentine packs in there. And if you haven't caught um, haven't seen those yet. I do have a video that I did at the beginning of last year. My That was like my second video I ever did on the channel. So I will link that up here in the cards and you can go click on that and see what's in them. So I have a few of those still left. So let's, uh, I want to make sure to note to mention that. And let's see, what else do I have? Oh, my daughter. She was asked last year to be on a show. Hold on, I lost track again where I am. Where am I? Right there. Okay. So last year she was contacted by a producer or somebody, headhunter, scout, I don't know what they are, for a show on Fox that was going to be a new groundbreaking show. And it's called I Can See Your Voice. And so they had contacted her and asked her if she wanted to come and appear on that. They found her through her YouTube channel because she sings. And, um, you know, she's been putting stuff out there for a long time. 
She has recently got back and cleaned it up so that um, she's got more professional looking and sounding. And I mean, some of them are from when she was like 12. So <laughs> she kind of, she hid all of those. So it looks more like a grown up girl's uh, YouTube channel now, not a little kid channel. Anyway, so they had contacted her and they had flown her out to um, work on this show and to do taping and to um, do all the things that they needed to do to get the show going. Well, that was last contacted her like last January and then flew her out mid-March and then everything started shutting down <laughs> and so unfortunately about the time you know we were all like things were changing so fast as you know states were closing and businesses were closing and travel was closing countries were closing everything was just up and up in the air like just changing hour by hour it seemed like and um so she was down in L.A., and most of L.A. had been already closed due to COVID, and so she didn't have much to do. Like, when you're not on set, they just take you back to your hotel room, and they wouldn't let her interact with people much. And um, so the day before final taping, the producer, or executive, I don't, I don't know what all the titles of these people are called, but anyway, he was somebody pretty high up that, that was important. And he came in and he said, I know you guys have been working hard and everything, but we got to send you home because we just don't know if at this point you're even going to be able to get home if we don't, you know, the airlines are shutting down and stuff and we want to make sure you can get home. So they said, we'll just wait and see. And then they waited a couple of months or whatever and um, eventually released her from her contract. So she did not get to appear. Well, hey, look at this. Well, they have recontacted her because, you know, they have all of her information and her backstory and all the pictures we sent them and different things that we had to prepare for her to appear last year. I'm going to do another one. I have another strip here. Hold on. So, they contacted her again and they would like her to appear on season two. So, what they had in, wound up doing was... Um, just calling back people that were local to the area that could get there by driving or whatever, or already lived there. So season one is all people that are kind of close to, isn't this just the ugliest? Maybe I'll turn that over. <laughs> I don't know. Ah. Anyway, so she has been asked to appear on season two. So she hasn't signed a new contract, so I can tell you right now. <laughs> She's going to appear on season two of I Can See Your Voice. And it's an interesting premise. So if you are curious about the show, you know, if you have Hulu, it streams on Hulu right now. But we were having a hard time trying to figure out exactly how it was going to be set up because it's a little bit different. She shows up on it, and but she's not a contestant. She's just somebody who sings. And then the actual contestants are just regular people who I guess apply to be on the show. And... They have a panel of famous people who help them guess whether or not the contestants can really sing. Two of the panelists remain the same and then they change out the rest of them episode to episode. Oh my goodness, super loud wind, oh wow. Holy cow, it's raining outside and it's dark out and now, wow, wind gust, that was loud. Anyway, um, so, the contestant has to guess based on looking at these characters up there, which my daughter's going to be a character, and they give them this backstory, and you have to guess from the backstory whether or not you think they can sing. And so if you can sing, uh, the way they try to guess is you lip sync to a song with your own voice, and if you can't sing, because there's, there's people who legit cannot sing and people who really can, if you cannot sing, then you are lip syncing to someone else's voice. And then they have to guess, okay, was that really your voice? Can you really sing? And at first we were like super confused. It's based on a Korean show called Show Me Your Voice or something. Um, so we were just not getting it. So we're glad that she's on season two because now we can go back and watch it. We have watched a few episodes and actually it's turned out a lot more fun really than I thought it was. <laughs> That's bad to say. I just was not quite understanding the concept. So. It's actually pretty fun. So check that out. She'll be on season two, which will air in the fall. Um, I think she's gonna say yes. I hope she does. That would be smart of her to do. Anywho, 
so yeah, that's that's all our exciting news. I did work on another Christmas journal though, using up scraps and things. So I just wasn't quite ready to be done with Christmas stuff yet, I guess. I don't know. It just I just had the idea, so I wanted to do it. When I reopen the shop, I will have another little Christmas journal in there. It's a mini ring binder. I don't know if I'm gonna what I'm gonna do on the cover just yet. I don't know if I will do anything, but it's a um, it was a mini photo album. It had the little photo sleeves in it, and so I just liked it because it has the Santa pattern on it. So I've just added a bunch of scraps from my last project and some Santa themed pages. And I don't think that I am going to do a formal flip through. This is your formal flip flip through right here. <laughs> I don't think that I'll be adding a bunch of pages. I do have some little bits of ephemera and some embellishments, but I think maybe I will, instead of trying to decorate it up too much, I'll just put them all in a package and let the new owner take care of it. This one is a, come here. Ah. This one is a photo sleeve, and then it opens the last page right there. It has a nice little sentiment. So I'll probably still put something here like a, this book belongs to pocket tag thing and we'll see anyway it was real cute maybe I'll do something here but I'm keeping it kind of simple kind of plain because these are just scrap busters these are ones I use up my scraps on so I don't want to take a lot of time you know they don't get as much attention as the other ones do but yeah so that's what that's what I have here so that'll be in the shop so I'm trying to think, is there anything else I really need to tell you? I don't think so. I've got glue here, so I want to finish up my my fabric swatches. All right, so I'm gonna pause this here. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I've got these out here now so that you can just take a quick look at how they've turned out. This one's much shorter, which is nice. So I don't know, I've got quite a lot here and I have a ton more squares, I honestly, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be using them in, but I thought if I get these all laid out and sewn up, then when I do use them in journals, as I use them, then I can add extra embellishment. You know, I can add buttons or rickrack or lace or whatever I want, but kind of get some of these awful, awful patterns <laughs> used up. So yeah, I didn't have, it's just been kind of a, this isn't like one of my most exciting videos ever, but I have been doing something lately. I have. A ton of videos in my watch later list you know so I've just been speeding them up I mean I've known you could do this I just haven't done it but because a lot of videos and a lot of people I watch tend to have 45 minute to an hour long videos and there's only so much time in the day where you can sit around and watch YouTube videos I have been speeding them up and watching on it depends on how fast they talk so if they're a slower talker I speed them up and watch them on two times if they're kind of a, a regular even speed, I will speed them up to one and a half or maybe 1.75. <laughs> so anyway, if you're bored with my videos, try watching me on one and a half. I can tell you, I am pretty dang funny. <laughs> that sounds conceited, but it, it is just quite amusing to do that anyway. But that means I can get through um, more videos in the same amount of time. So that's just a little hint. When you're watching me, if you don't have a lot of time and I'm talking too slowly like this one, Speed me up, it's a lot of fun. So today I have a couple of quotes for you that I thought were pretty apropos for beginning a new year and shutting the door on the old. The first one is by Henry Ford and it says, one who fears failure limits his worth. Failure is the opportunity to begin again more intelligently. There's that one, so. We're starting a new year we can begin again more intelligently and then the second one is by Ann Landers it says maturity is the ability to live in peace with that which we cannot change so we can't change 2020 it was what it was we're hopeful for a positive 2021 but regardless maturity is the ability to live in peace with that which we cannot change so remember, next week we are going to celebrate one year of Creator's Call Shop here on YouTube. And until next week, I want you to be inspired and do something creative today. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.